10 a.m. Big day today. Thank you so much for coming to our panel. This is going to be a viral infection prosthetic makeup. Uh, joining us today, we have Rocco Gagliotti again and Chris Osorio. So if you came yesterday, you already know this, but Rocco is an Emmy nominated makeup artist for his work on Stranger Things season four. And Chris has worked on shows like American Horror Story, Hunters, This Is Us. So two amazing makeup artists working in the industry. Um, my name is Heather Eisner. I am from VAMP. We are a makeup training school in Orlando, Florida. Uh, we have a booth over in the community zone, booth 2195. Uh, so come see us. We're going to be doing demos there all day if you can't get enough and you want to see some more of what we do. But um, yeah, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and start, start the makeup because yesterday we had a nice leisurely hour and a half. And today we've got 45 minutes, so it's like a mad dash to get it all in. Um, but yeah, so today we're going to be doing these little tattoo transfers is what they're called. Um, they're also called Praze transfers, Tinsley transfers, and they basically work like a temporary tattoo. You can buy these pre-made. Um, we made these specifically for this makeup. Um, we actually teach our students how to sculpt, mold, and create these in our FX program. Um, so they go on just like, you know, when you were younger and you had little temporary water activated tattoos that works very similar to that. Um, you know, these, there's different materials prosthetics can be made out of. Foam latex is what we used yesterday on our model here on the stage. Um, and that is made obviously out of foam latex. These are made out of prosade, which is an adhesive that we use to stick prosthetics on. So they're already like pre-sticky, ready to go. Um, so they're going to get that on Arnold. Arnold is our model today. He's going to, yeah. Hi, Arnold. Hey, Arnold. I guess that would have been. <laughs> yeah. Feeling it off. <laughs> if anyone has questions through this process, please hop up on the mic. Don't be shy. Today we're gonna to be using um, a lot of European body arts makeup, um, EBA it's typically called. So we really like their products. We're using their alcohol palettes and their airbrush paints. Let's. So now we're pretty much just going to soak the transfer. It's literally like a tattoo that you get in one of those venting machines. So pretty much it's just going to be with water. You just soak it up and you have it kind of go through the transfer paper. And then it slowly starts to kind of slide off onto the skin. Got to get it really saturated. So those little peach pads have obviously water on them. So they're able to... We have a question in the back. I just wanted to know, what is the story of the character that you're doing the makeup for today? So I, we have him dressed as um, a kind of a scientist from Resident Evil. Nice. So it's going to be kind of like a viral infection, nasty, I don't want to say zombie, but a little. Borderline there. Yeah, kind yeah of we'll like, go borderline zombie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Prazade transfers are used a lot in the industry. Um, they were actually created for the movie, The Passion of the Christ. Uh, they're, they go on really fast and they're quicker than applying a traditional foam latex kind of prosthetic where you have to do a lot of gluing and weighting and blending. These, are, these go on a lot faster. Um, I tell people if you've seen, obviously, I assume everyone here has seen Guardians of the Galaxy. 
But Dave Bautista's character, all of his markings, those are all Praze transfers, um, as well as in Black Panther, uh, Michael B. Jordan's character, all those scars that he has on his body, those are Praze transfers as well. Here we go. The big reveal. <laughs> So as you can see, they got that water slide paper peeled off, um, and now they're going to probably apply a few more before they start the painting. But you can see how much faster that goes on than having to apply a traditional foam piece and then blend around the edges until, until it's blended. <laughs> So it looks like we have a, oh, we had an audience question. Oh, oh well, we oh. saw you there. Um, how do you guys like blend out scar wax so seamlessly? Because I can't get it to blend out very nicely. Scar wax. Scar yeah. wax. Va Vaseline, Chris is saying. That'll help. Oh. Vaseline yeah. might help. Um, 99 also help. 99% uh, alcohol. Or you can even use 91%. You could buy it at even the grocery store. Um, and you can put it on like your finger and you can buff out the, the edges with it um, and like kind of smooth it out. But Vaseline works really nice too. You need some kind of like lubrication to, to really buff it out because it starts to roll up, right? It gets weird. So well, we try not to use that a lot, <laughs> the scar wax, because it gets, for tiny things, it works really great. The bigger you start to get with those things, the uh, easier it is to crack and move, but using Vaseline or 90, one to 99% alcohol is helpful to smooth it out. Okay. Yeah, because that scar wax kind of gives those problems and having to recreate cuts on the fly, we now use Prazi transfers a lot because we're able to pre-sculpt what we want it to look like, we mold it, and then we can make as many copies as we want of the little cut, and it goes on even faster than, than the wax because you don't have to sculpt anything out. It's just ready to go. Good question. And these transfers were sculpted by one of our instructors, Brian Mahoney. Um, so he made these for our demo today. We have a question from the audience. When creating a look like this, how do you go about um, coming up with a look without making it look, you know, messy or muddy? Because this is a viral infection look. I know a lot of the time that could be an issue yeah. how do you go about creating something at least a concept like this without getting too muddy yeah with this yeah look? um that's a good I, I could answer that or does somebody else yeah pretty much a lot of the times uh references so if there's anything that you have in mind like if you have any inspiration photos a lot of the stuff like right now there's like the last of us so the last of us is a great place to kind of take a look at stuff Resident Evil always is good, but there's so many like World War Z, there's different types of in infected interpretations, but even just in nature, even if you look at some of those gory like Instagram posts and stuff like that, they'll give you some organic kind of textures that you can use and just have a picture with you sometimes that also helps out because it is true. You, you can just kind of start painting and start painting and then it just gets super muddy. And at that point, you're kind of like, it's so hard to go come back from that, but just have some reference photos because that always helps out. Thank you so much. And doing test makeups, you know, if you're if you're wanting to do a look, as easy as it is to be like, oh, I'll just do a day of, just kind of planning it out, seeing how it goes, what works, what doesn't, because um, it's easy to get excited and want to add every single thing all at once. <laughs> so these transfers are kind of working like a multi-piece prosthetic. So they're going to overlap. Um, basically that is just an easier way to apply your pieces to the face instead of having to do like a whole sheet mask all at once, which can be really just difficult to deal with, making sure you get everything in the right spot. So when we break it down into like these little puzzle pieces, we could reapply them one at a time and make sure the placement's really where we want it. And because these are made out of Prazade, uh, we have to make sure that we're powdering them because Prazade is a contact adhesive, so it'll stick to itself once it's dry, it gets tacky. 
Um, and it, it can get out of hand quickly if you're not making sure to powder things. And before you know it, your brush is stuck to your hand. And, you know, as artists, it's like we have to double check we're not being messy all the time, <laughs> which takes practice. giving White Walker right now. <laughs> so right now we're gonna, um, sorry. Um, right now, Chris is going to do a little uh, brow color correction just because he has dark uh, brows and these pieces sometimes uh, tend to be a little transparent. Um, so we don't want this dark brow to come through the piece. So we're just gonna neutralize it before we put these brow pieces on because then we're gonna be fighting the color of his eyebrows while we're painting. And so to avoid that, we're just going to um, correct it with some like orange coral uh, that neutralizes the blue black in his brows just a little bit so that it'll help us out in our paint job afterwards. So we're going to do that while Chris is doing that. I'm going to now that these pieces are on with a red uh, makeup sponge, I'm just going to go around and stipple some adhesive around the edges to really lock everything in. We do have a Q&A mic right there in the middle of the aisle towards the back. If anybody wants to ask any questions, feel free to walk on up. While they're getting that applied, I will tell you guys a little bit about our school. Uh, we opened in 2016, and we have two career training programs for people who would like to do makeup professionally. Um, we have a 10-week beauty program where we teach everything from clean beauty to bridal to airbrush to avant-garde makeup. Um, we try to really set our beauty students up for success in whatever corrective beauty makeup job they may have. Um, one of our students is in the crowd right now, so hey, Brooke. <laughs> uh, and we also have a an FX program, Modern FX Makeup Artistry, and that's a five and a half month course. It's got a lot of fabrication in it, so we teach obviously the makeup applications, but we also teach our students how to sculpt their prosthetics, how to life cast, how to run their pieces, and make latex masks. Um, so yeah, we try to make sure they can they're kind of able to do a little bit of everything. We have a question from Rose Marcus on Facebook. Yeah. It says, how will it stick to the eyebrows and how will the brows not get pulled out when it's removed? That's and a good is question. our model worried about that? He, we are giving him an eyebrow wax, but he doesn't know it yet. No, that's not true. Yeah. You want to sure. I'll hold the mic for you. I'll be okay. your Brittany mic. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so the question is, how do we avoid pulling out the brow hairs? 
uh, very carefully during removal. So obviously, uh, when you're applying it, right, there's not concern about anything ripping out. But during removal, we use a special um, uh, removing, like, and it's an adhesive remover. Um, EBA makes one called uh, Vapor, and it's just an adhesive and uh, paint remover. And so very carefully with the brush, we're just being careful not to, um, you know, detach any hair from the brow. Something else you can do is do a layer of uh, glue stick. Um, like Elmer's glue like stick. An, like a purple invisible Elmer's glue stick. And um, almost like when you're doing a brow block. And you can just keep the brow down and it'll help to protect the hairs. And then that's just water soluble and you can just wash it off with soap and water. There's a couple of different ways to go about it. There's yeah. always a concern, and we would be lying if we said we wouldn't lose one eyebrow hair in the process, but that's the um, that's the risk that we're willing to take. The brow hair casualty. Yeah. You know, it happens. He's going to make it. He'll survive through it. Oh, is our mic on back there? Uh-oh. Good now? Yeah. Okay. Um, when it comes to doing a prosthetic makeup look, um, priming the skin, is there any way to go about doing something like that? Is there something specific uh, to go about priming or preparing the skin before applying any prosthetics for a longer lasting wear? Um, especially like at a con or anything like that, especially on sets. Is yeah. there something Absolutely. done previously? Yeah. Well, you want to start with obviously clean skin. Um, you don't want any open wounds on the skin. That can be something that's kind of hairy to have to deal with. So we want to start with clean skin. If it's important to know what your actor or your talent or even your own skin type is, if you know you get really oily or you know you get really sweaty, there are ways to kind of counteract that. Uh, you can use things like zinc powder, which is what I like to use. Um, it can be pressed into the skin. You can. I would start with like even witch hazel. You know, clean all the oils off of your face. I've even had times where we use a little bit of like isopropyl alcohol if someone's really oily in an area. I'm not advising you to douse your face in alcohol. This is a very small amount I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, you want to clean the skin off for a good uh, adhesion. And if you have oils on your face, it can kind of counteract that. And the same even goes for like face paint. You know, um, if you're using even like a water based face paint and if you apply it and you notice it's kind of streaky, it's probably because you have oils on your skin. So those need to be removed so that it's not interacting with the product that you're using. So to kind of go back to what you were asking, witch hazel works great. Um, certain makeup brands have their own kind of toner, you know, so that's just brand preference at that point. Uh, but like I said, we can use sweat stop too. That's kind of like what zinc does, zinc powder. Um, so yeah, but that's a good question. Yeah, Derma Shield. We also, there's also like barrier products that help kind of create a little bit of a barrier between the skin and the makeup and it makes the easy it makes it a little bit easier to remove at the end of the day um so we will use those too but sometimes those come down to artist preference and again knowing what your own you know skin is like or what your actor's skin is like to kind of counter that i i even know uh, girls that use milk of magnesia on their face for applying beauty makeup if they're really oily and I've, I have friends that like swear by it and they tr have tried every par product on the you know market that they're like, this is supposed to help with oily skin, but they're like, nope, I'm using the milk of magnesia. It's the best thing to use. So random tip for you there. Yeah, I've seen that. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. So, um, oh, is there a question? Hi, sorry. Yes, Wednesday. I have a what yes. is your question? Um, so, in the past, when I've done Halloween makeup, I've used the Makeup Forever, like you know, the palettes where they have like multiple colors, like the Flash like, Palette. Yes, the, the, uh -huh. with the multiple colors. Um, and whenever I do a full face, the problem that I always have is transfer, even though I do setting powder. So, I was going to ask you, what are your recommendations for something like that? Because I do love the cream consistency of it. 
Um, and then once I put setting powder, it just really looks really dull. So I don't know if you have any tips for something like that. That's a, a really good question. So I really love uh, using cream makeup in beauty. And for those things like that, um, the any type of cream, um, you know, emollient makeup, you have to use powder, right? There's no way. If you don't use powder, it's going to travel. It's going to go everywhere. Right. And it's going to transfer. So that's just the nature of that product. So the best thing to do is powder it. A heavy powder. And I know it seems crazy, but... A, a large velour puff and heavy powder will lock it. Um, and then to get rid of that dullness, use a setting spray. Got it. Okay. And that will help to eliminate the powdery look and lock everything in. I would suggest Pro Seal from EBA, or there is a ton of other ones. There's Maron makes a barrier spray. Green Marble is another great one, really locks it in. Krylon makes one that's really great. Those are all professional brands that are used specifically for those types of makeups. And it will really lock it in and it'll bring some life back to the, to the makeup a little bit, especially if you're using a lot of powder. So we'll do that for this too, because this is a heavy powdered application just because all of this is made with adhesive it's literally made with what's in this bottle so when you guys do the color are you guys gonna be using powders or are you guys gonna be using creams for colors to color this yeah we're gonna use alcohol-based paints okay because we need to make washes because for a look like this we want hyper realism right so we're not gonna do a type of stage it's not gonna be a high contrast in light and shade so what we're gonna use is um, alcohol-based paints to create washes to color the skin or airbrush. So, but in, in this stage when we're um, applying and I did that stipple around everything and I powdered, if I were to paint on top of this, it would create that dullness. So what I'm gonna do before I paint is go with a sealer like Pro Seal that I have here and I could spray it right on or I'll take it on a, a wedge sponge and I'll just uh, seal everything and that will do two things. It'll eliminate the powdery look and it'll lock everything in place before I start my paint. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Sorry, that was very lengthy. No, and I appreciate it. I, I won't stop talking, so. All good. And different sealers have different finishes, too. If you want to get down and nitpick things, um, they're not all made the same. So sometimes you'll use a sealer like you use a different one that you may have, and the effects are very shiny. So test things out before you're you know, gonna let it rip on your big day. <laughs> oh, question. So if you're doing a form of like latex closer to the hairline, would that be like around the same thing for like eyebrows or would there be a different process to make sure hair doesn't get pulled out? So, um, what, like a liquid latex? Uh, yeah, like just say a liquid latex. If you're going to do that, I would block your brow down with a glue stick, uh, because mm -hmm. latex, liquid latex can be painful and it, yes. <laughs> it will remove layers of skin and hair. Um, uh, so yeah, or you, you know, when you remove it, you can use something like 244 fluid, which is a silicone based okay. fluid. It's not really like consumerly available. Um, but there are ways to, to remove it gently. It's easier to not have to, right? So if you make that, that barrier on your, your brow, I would, I would suggest that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I know, I did, I'm sorry. Just figuring out positioning. Yeah. Sure. 
we're just figuring out positioning on, on some of these pieces because um, sometimes um, it can be like a little free form, right? You can puzzle them together how you want. And especially like the lip, how it overlaps those cheek pieces. So the, um, the way that this piece is, it could either go straight on like this or we can tilt it to the side, but I think we're gonna put it on to the front and it'll create some cool like um, texture. You can't really see it here. Um, I don't know if you can, but there's some like divots and pockets in here to create some cool like infected looking skin. I'm really hoping, I don't know if we'll have time to, we can start a little bit of paint, but we're going to finish this over at the booth and it's going to look really, really awesome. I, I wish we had more time to start, but we want to get all these pieces on uh, now and then we'll eventually start the paint, but um, it is a lengthy, uh, it's, a, it's an impossible to do in 45 minutes. Yesterday we had an hour and 45 minutes and if we had been able to swap, we probably should have done that. Sorry, Megacon. <laughs> That's also just artist hubris. We can do it. 45 minutes, we can get that done. Has anybody in the crowd used Prazade transfers, just out of curiosity? No? No? I've started seeing them for sale at like Party City during Halloween. Um, the brand is PTM that I've seen. Uh, it stands for prosthetic transfer material. And if you're doing something with like injuries, I look for those. It's like in a blue and red kind of packaging and they go on real quick and easy. It'll save you some time of having to sculpt thing in, things in your scar wax. You know, it just goes right on. The other thing about this is that we can customize what we want the coloring to be um, and we add flocking to it which is like basically fibers little fabric fibers to kind of make it look like skin we want to make them look realistic these are on the whiter side sure. um, but you can make your transfers in any color to kind of go with what you're doing or you know any different skin tones a lot of times they'll come in just kind of like a clear pink kind of color so it's you know kind of more universally blendable. And I know we mentioned uh, the last of us a little bit earlier, we're going to be doing two clicker makeups tomorrow at our booth. And our lovely Arnold will be one of our clickers. So, but it's really, really impressive what our teachers created, um, even down to custom dentures that they made for them so that their teeth are all split the way the, the clickers have that. Also, Arnold's a good character actor, so he could breathe some life into it. Now we're going to take the powdery look away by uh, just applying some sealer on a sponge. We have a question from Facebook. I think this is for Arnold. She says, Does it feel sticky? Um, yes, but then no, because once they apply like the powder to it, it takes the stickiness away. So at first it will be sticky, but later on, not really.
Okay, so we're at a good point to start painting a little bit. Um, we have uh, several more pieces to add, which we'll add later. We have a cool, um, like, chewed ear, like, silicone piece. We have a cool gash we're going to put on his head that's kind of, it's going to be real gory and disgusting. But um, we have some cool pieces. But right now is a good stopping point for paint. And because uh, you can tell the pieces don't match his skin, so we are going to make it infected looking, make it less lively. But in order to do that first, we have to match all of these pieces to his skin tone first. So that's, to us, the easiest way to start is to take away this by putting on putting um, his skin tone back into the piece. And then from there, we can infect it, right? So it's like we're, we're making it him first, like making the canvas a part of him, and then we'll infect the skin after that. And if you do want to see our clicker makeups tomorrow uh, or this makeup or any makeup that we're doing over the weekend, be sure to follow us on Instagram at vampfx. Um, we'll post all of the work that we do in our story, uh, in our main feed. We also have a TikTok, but I'm bad at that. So follow the Instagram. <laughs> Okay. Arnold's also bad at TikTok, so I feel seen. We're working on it. We're working on it. So um, what? I want to sit. No, 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 no. It was a joke. It was a joke. I do want to sit. I want to lay down, actually. Um, yeah. Well, the, the model gets to lay down. What if the makeup artist got to lay down one time and they had to stand up? Right. <laughs> um, okay. Sorry, we have 10 minutes. We're on time crunch. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're uh, – Chris is going to use – I'm holding too many things, sorry. Um, Chris is going to use um, an airbrush. This is a specialty airbrush. It's called a Pache, and uh, it has a, a floating cup. That's not what it's called, but I just made that up. Um, it's like a side cup. It, it enters through there, and the way that this works is the, when the air and paint are atomized, it creates like droplets. So – what he's doing is uh, he's, he's thinned out a uh, blood tone kind of color, and he's um, spraying a bunch of spatter. And what that's doing is creating like a blood layer, and it's going to help to put some life into this kind of lifeless color of the prosthetic. So we're taking um, this uh, color and giving it a nice little spritz all over, to create some life and then we can go in with actual skin tone. So it's like creating a blood layer and then going on top with skin tone, which is a, a technique that's used a lot in foam latex, if anybody uses foam latex prosthetics. Uh, we add the blood layer to create life into the skin or not. When you start painting on top, it'll get weird and gray. And even though we're gonna make him look dead, w before you die, you still have blood, right? You, you still, you still need an undertone. So it's, it's things sometimes you don't think about that until you actually do it. And um, you need to understand, I think, the parts of the body and the anatomy and understanding how uh, color theory works. So we have to add these layers of color before we can have fun. Not that this isn't fun, but... So you touched upon this just a little bit earlier, but uh, we got another question in uh, Facebook. And for the people that just joined us, Adam Fisher asks, what shows or productions have your team been a part of? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, so our main staff, uh, our, our FX teachers, Osiris and Brian, Osiris Rivera and Brian Mahoney, I should use their full names. Uh, they are both in the IATSE Makeup Artist Union, which is based out of New York. It's uh, IATSE Local 798, which Rocco is also a part of. Um, so... Brian and Osiris have both worked on film and TV. I really wish that they were here to give their own <laughs> their own resumes, but they are not here today. Um, and we've also, I met them personally working at Universal. So we've worked on a lot of things together at Universal Orlando, um, whether it's from obviously the marquee events like Halloween Horror Nights, Grinchmas, 
uh, Mardi Gras, but also the parks will oftentimes get productions that come in that we get to work on, like The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. And um, sometimes they'll have special events where big names are there for like shareholder meetings and we'll do makeup in the green room for that. Um, I just worked on a film actually with Rocco in La so. uh, yeah. yeah. I don't even know if we're allowed to talk about it, but we just worked on a film yeah, over we're in. We're allowed to say what it's called because that's public information. You can go Google it, right? It's called uh, Project Artemis. That's it. That's all we can say. That's all. <laughs> that's it. Very exciting. Um, what am I doing? I don't know. Oh, what are you doing? That's it. So, did you do the Vecna makeup? I got No, ask. but our very close friend was one of the yes. makeup artists that applied that who used to teach at Vamp, actually. Uh, Nick's Herrera is his name. He just won an Emmy for that makeup for doing Vecna. Him and and the team. There was a team of about five five six people. Yep. That that, that applied were just that. On that were that just on feature. Vecna. Um. So yeah, we're really proud of Nick's. And actually, he was teaching at Vamp, and he said, "Hey, I got to take some time off." He's telling me this. I'm like, okay. He's very vague not telling me what it is. And I find out later he was leaving to go do Vecna because he couldn't talk about it. There's like a non-disclosure agreement when you're working on these really big, you know, projects. So he brought his Emmy by the school and he let us all like hold it. Like it was, you know, the Holy Grail. It was really heavy. So yeah. But Rocco was working on, um, the rest of the cast. So he came on, actually, I'll tell you a little backstory here. Uh, Rocco started working on Stranger Things. Rocco also used to teach at Bayup, by the way. Then he, now he's working in production. So he's, he's usually off in Atlanta. Um, but he was our beauty instructor for a little while. Um, but he was working on, he got called in to do The Grievers, which are in, I want to say, episode two. Yep. Episode two where they're at the funeral and there's all the, if anybody's watched the show, they're at the funeral and it's all those zombie looking creatures. And Fred's like nightmare. Yes. Yeah. So they are zombie creatures and they have no nose. And so he came on to do that. And uh, Rocco's also excellent at beauty makeup. Um, so they kept him on because they needed beauty artists. And I don't know if I'm incorrect saying this, but there were some artists that they were like, bye, we don't need you now because you can't do beauty. So being able to do beauty makeup and FX makeup is very helpful it can be very helpful i like to think it happened like that in my mind but maybe maybe it didn't i don't know um but yeah I, I originally was asked to come on for three days and i ended up staying for six months so it uh was a big you know whole a whole thing but it was a lovely experience but we did all of the main cast so we did all of the kids and karen wheeler hot mom we did uh steve Caleb, who plays Lucas, yeah, the bat fight fight was um, me and my department head, Amy Forsyth, and we had a great time. It was really cool. Chris has also worked on a lot of cool stuff. He's worked on American Horror Story, um, the new one that just came out. Um, this Is Us, which is TV show on... Uh, I think it's ABC. ABC, but I think it's finished now, right? It, they had the complete season finale. Um, he also just finished working, not just, but it just came out, is Hunters, if you watch that on... Uh, Amazon. He worked on season two of Hunters and did the big old age makeup. Um, on Udo Kears, who played Hitler in um, Hunters. He also worked on I Want to Dance with Somebody, the Whitney Houston movie. and countless things in between. And he's also in uh, IOTC 706, which is a Hollywood union. Chris lives in Los Angeles. So he works on a, a million, of, those are just some things, but he's constantly working on, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, here, here to support. So uh, right now we've added that kind of redness and if you can see it kind of tied it a little bit more together, it created some something more than just the the kind of white fleshy light color that those pieces were so this is um gonna help us in our paint job so as we start to create 
his flesh skin tone color. We got to blend this all in and um, should look really cool once it's all finished. But I think we're coming up towards the end here. Does anybody have any last minute questions? If not, like we said, we're going to be doing this for minimum two to three hours at the booth. Maybe I'm exaggerating. One to three hours at the booth. Some amount of hours. Where is the booth, <laughs> out of curiosity? The booth is $21.95. It is underneath the community zone sign. So there's like a big teal sign hanging from the ceiling towards the other end of the North Concourse. The good news is, is by the time you're able to actually walk over there, we'll be finishing it because it's like a sea of people out there. Um, so we'll be ready to show you the finished product when you get over there to us. But thank you guys so much for joining us, watching us get these prosthetics on. We appreciate it. And yeah, if you do have any questions that you didn't get to ask, please come see us. 2195 is our booth. Um, and we'll be happy to chat with you guys about makeup, all things makeup. So thank you guys.